before we get started sewing the February topper, I wanted to give you a real quick tutorial on nesting seams and give you some tips and tricks about how to get some accurate cutting. I have got four pieces of fabric here that I've sewn together. And the lessons that you learn here will apply throughout all of the toppers. So I've created these blocks and they're all sewn with a one quarter inch seam and I have not pressed them open yet, you can tell. You can stack up your fabric like cards and it will give you a nice flush edge. So I've got my fabric stacked and I want to cut this into two and a half inch squares. Whenever I measure, I will try to use the smallest ruler possible so that I don't have a whole bunch of other ruler out here that could possibly shift the fabric. Not only do I line up the this edge of the ruler on the mat along with the edge of the fabric, I also line up, let me get real close, I also line up, I'll find a straight line right up here and put it right on that edge so now I have a perfect 90 degree angle going right here and then I'll look down here at the bottom. So whenever I make a cut, I don't just look at this side to find out how wide I need to make the cut. I look at all three sides and make sure that the lines on the ruler are always straight with the edges of the fabric. So when I cut it, I now have a perfect two and a half inch square every time. If I want my block to look like this, I have to have one seam allowance going one direction and one seam allowance going the other direction. Before I press and before I sew, I finger press. And when I finger press, I start in the middle and I work my way out. I always do that. You just kind of want to get an idea, okay? If I wanted it to go like this, I need to do it this direction. And press from the middle and kind of just press it out. And when I use heat on it, I will not use any steam. Steam can warp the fibers in your block. So I'm gonna to go to the ironing board. All right, I've got these pressed open with my fingers and I'm just going to put it straight on there and do not swish. If I move it, I lift first. I do not recommend when you're first starting out learning how to nest seams, I do not recommend pressing your seams open. I'm going to give them a shot of the premium crafting and quilting spray from Magic. I love this stuff. And that's going to make them want to stay in place. There's a lot of thought about always pressing to the dark, but when you're nesting a seam, sometimes that's not possible. So on this one right here, I can see the seam allowance through the fabric, but when you finally quilt it, you'll never notice the difference. You just won't see it. Now, when it's time for me to nest this seam to make the block, you can see my seam allowances are going different directions. The one with the navy blue is coming toward me and the one with the red is going away from me. So one going toward me, one going away from me. When you nest a seam, the term nest comes from butting up the edges together. Now, there is a school of thought about pressing seams open. When you are just learning how to do this, I do not recommend pressing your seams open because just like, just like little kids need to have big Duplo blocks before they begin to work with Legos, you need bigger seams until your fingers get very comfortable with nesting. 
So as you can see here, I'm going to make a line. Here is the quarter inch seam allowance on the blue. Let me flip it over. Yeah, that's what I want anyway. Here is the quarter inch seam allowance stitch line on the orange. I am going to sew it so that it's going to stitch right here on this edge. When you want to stitch a, a nested seam together, you want this seam allowance on the bottom to be facing toward your body and you want this seam allowance on top to be facing away from your body. The reason being, so this one on top faces away. So your top fabric has the seam allowance facing away. The bottom fabric has the seam allowance, has it to me or toward me. The reason for that is most sewing machines will have a little bit of a lip where their plate starts right here and that plate if this seam allowance is facing away from you it can get caught up under there and then it will get folded up under which isn't the end of the world but if you want a nice flat seam you really want the bottom seam allowance going toward you so that as the as the fabric travels under the needle, there's no chance of that seam allowance getting caught up underneath. So top away from you, bottom toward you. When you nest your seams, I start a little bit apart, put the top edges of the fabric even with each other, and then I slide them together until I feel the resistance, and then I know they are perfectly nested. That is a good nested seam right there. When I pin, and I always pin whenever I nest a seam, because if not, they can shift. Your stitch line is going to go on a quarter of an inch right here, okay? And before I told you, here is the stitch line of the seam allowance that is facing away from you. Once you have, can feel where you've got them nested together nice and flush, you take a pin and you go in from the top below that stitch line right there. You want to go in from the top, but I've, I've, come, I've got both seam allowances anchored. I've come through the back seam allowance and go out the other side and what that does is that anchors that anchors those seam allowances together so they won't shift so you go in below this this seam line right here you go in on this side and out on that side so you have anchored both seam allowances top and bottom to one another the reason you do it this way is so that as your needle is traveling you're going to stop before you before you go over the pin you're going to stop and notice I didn't go in straight I went in at an angle so as your needle comes down and it's making it stitch I'm going to go one stitch over that seam line right there and when that one stitch is over this seam line then I'm going to pull my pin because now the seams seam allowances that are nested have been anchored together by that one stitch and then I can pull this out. If you take your pin and come in from this direction you're gonna have to pull the pin before your before your seam is nested together with a stitch. You want to pull the pin after so you would pin it from the bottom to the top and you want to pin in the seam allowances to anchor them together. Now what I do with these is I will go ahead and take a pin and if so when they lay flat like this they're not even. You can see more blue sticking up off the top.
So I'm going to go ahead and make them even. I'm going to shift them just a little bit and I'm going to put it under the needle, under the foot, and I'm going to take about two stitches. And then what I'm going to do is down at the bottom, I've got more brown down here than pink or tan, I'm going to make these even and then I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to put them together down here at the bottom and hold them like that so now they are even. I'm going to pull this down. I am using quarter inch seam tape. This is from Cluck Cluck Sew. I'll put a link to it below the video. I love this stuff because the needle knows what it's doing. What it's doing. You don't need to watch the needle. You need to watch down here and make sure you're feeding the fabric straight from all the way back here and it will go ahead and do what it needs to up there. So let's get stitching. I'm going to stitch right along on the quarter inch. I'm, uh, this is a quarter inch foot and my fabric is even with the edge of the foot. I'm going to go over the orange seam line so now I'm over it by one stitch. I'm going to pull my pin and if everything worked out we should have a perfectly nested seam. See that? There's not one stitch width top, bottom, left, or right. It is a perfectly nested seam. So you're going to use this technique throughout all of the toppers. And this is important that you master this. And the tips that I gave you about making sure that they're flush, do not press your seams open, not until you get to be, you know, pretty good. Keep your seams nice and flush. Finger press them. Press them with heat, no steam, and then when you anchor them together with a pin, go in the bottom, anchor those seam allowances, come back out the top, and then put them down at the bottom and keep your seams straight.